Babali Show, Episode Seven: Joking in Islam. Sometimes you're hanging out with your brothers, and everyone's having a good time, and then someone starts teasing someone. Everyone laughs, ha 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 ha, except for the one guy who's being made fun of, who's laughing a bit differently. <laughs> you look over and you see it's kind of hurting him, but you don't say nothing, not a word. It makes you wonder who's worse, the person teasing or the person not having the courage to say anything. Ever wonder how far you can take a joke in Islam? Well, it's time to find out. In a world where cultural Muslims have confused the masses and speakers are forced to be politically correct, rises one man, one voice, who changed everything. Hey, man, why are you all serious? This is just a podcast. <laughs> Let's talk about what they don't want to talk about. The Bob Ali Show. Welcome to the Bob Ali Show. I'm your host, Bob Ali. I've done around 200 shows all around the world where I basically get paid to stand on stage and make people laugh. Unlike most comedians you see on TV, I have to keep my content within the boundaries of Islam. I mean, I try to stay away from mocking any religions or making ethnic jokes or even lying. I'm constantly thinking to myself, am I telling the people the story the way it happened? Or was the last thing I just said accurate? Now you're probably wondering to yourself, why am I so self-conscious? And that's because I realized that I'm going to be accountable for every word I'm saying on or off the stage. But that pressure is nothing compared to the awkwardness I sometimes feel with my friends when they're making fun of each other. As weird as it sounds, this is how guys bond with one another. As soon as the joking is done, we move on to the next subject as if nothing was ever said. Sometimes I'm the person being made fun of, and most of the time I can take it, but that's because I know it's not being done out of spite. But it gets really awkward when I see someone being teased and it's affecting them, and I feel terrible for not saying nothing. Today's guest is Sheikh Yasser Ghadi. He has his bachelor's in hadith and his master's in theology from the Islamic University of Medina, and he has his PhD in Islamic studies from Yale University. He's here today to enlighten us on this rare topic, joking in Islam. Welcome to the Baba Ali Show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Yasser Ghadi, you are a very, very well known Sheikh. I give you your introduction already, but alhamdulillah, I think almost all my listeners already know who you are. I got a chance to know this Sheikh on a personal level before I actually attended any of his lectures. It's one thing to listen to his lectures, and it's another thing to know the person behind the lectures. And I can tell you that this man is, mashallah, it's an amazing human being, and the character and the way he conducts himself is, is amazing. So that's one of the reasons I actually wanted him on this. Hey, hey, don't forget I'm also funny as well. In fact, <laughs> did you just steal some of my own jokes? <laughs> so, and he does have a sense of humor, mashallah. And you know what's funny? To tell the listeners where we got this idea for this topic from, we were at GPU, and I don't know if you remember this or not. Uh, we were at the buffet for the breakfast, and I remember you were sitting with Sheikh Yusuf Estes and yourself. And you're like, hey, Bob Ali, come over here for a second. I'm like, yeah, what's up? And you're like, I have this topic I want you to do. For your videos, this covers the topic of joking or teasing in Islam. I'm like, you're a sheikh. How come you don't cover it? And like, if I cover it, my kids may not listen, but kids will definitely listen to you. So I was like, okay, I'll try to cover exactly. it. Exactly. I remember that because <laughs> that was like years ago. My my boys would love to listen to you, and they'd be always searching for your YouTubes and laughing, laughing their heads off. And of course, when it comes to me, they would go to sleep because I'm obviously their father. And who wants to listen to his own father give a lecture, right? So <laughs> I said, why don't you give a lecture so that my kids can listen to this topic? That was such a weird conversation. <laughs> But it, but I didn't forget. And although I didn't start the videos as I wanted to, I still remember that. And that's why when I started my podcast, that's one of the first things that was in my head. I said, I need to talk to Sheikh Yasser Ghadi, see if I can get him on the podcast. Alhamdulillah, you said yes. So where today's topic is that. We're going to be talking about joking in Islam. We're talking about teasing in Islam. I oftentimes see brothers tease each other and we cross the line and it gets awkward because no one really corrects the brother. No one really stops it. We kind of go with the flow. I want to ask you, in Islam, did the Sahabas joke around? Did they tease each other? And at what point was the Islamic line drawn? So the concept of, of laughing, joking, teasing, having a good time, actually we, we find this in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi himself. I mean the fact of the matter is that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would regularly smile and sometimes laugh and even sometimes be playful and merry. And just like salt to food, too much salt spoils the food and too little salt makes the food bland. Wow. Similarly, humor 
and you know jesting and whatnot and playfulness they have a role even in the lives of uh the most serious and, and the greatest of people and some people are more prone to humor than others and even amongst the sahaba there were some who are a little bit more let's say you know joking or jokesters than others and this is human nature every society has a few people and everybody knows them to be a little bit more if you like you know uh jestful and playful but the point is, even our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he actually, you know, cracked a few good jokes, and those jokes are well known in in the seerah. I mean, many of us have heard of the line that he said to the old lady when a very old lady comes hobbling up to him and says that, you know, a messenger of Allah, you know, make du'a that I can enter Jannah. And so the Prophet sallam said, "Don't you know, oh dear old lady, that old ladies don't enter Jannah, <laughs> right?" And she starts like, you know, "Oh my God, what do you mean? What are we gonna do now?" And then, of course, the punchline for her was, "Don't you know, my dear lady, that Allah azza wa jal will change you back." to the prime of your youth and you will enter Jannah you know when you are a, a young lady rather than an old lady so old ladies don't enter Jannah and that's a joke <laughs> old ladies do not enter Jannah young ladies enter Jannah and you will become a young lady and there's so many other uh, jokes as well in fact there's even an incident where the Prophet Islam actually played a type of prank let's say a type of, of jest that there was a sahabi that the Prophet Islam greatly you know liked because he was himself a very joking person and one day the Prophet Islam literally crept up from behind him and jumped f- from behind his back and held on to him and he was in the marketplace right mm-hmm. and uh, he was selling his own goods in the marketplace and the Prophet ﷺ held on to him and then said that who's going to buy this abd from me? <laughs> Pretending that the guy was a slave. Now, the Arabic word abd could mean a slave. But here he meant the slave of Allah and not the slave of other people. Yeah. Now, even in the Prophet's jokes, he never told a lie. Like the old lady not going to Jannah. Yes, old ladies don't go to Jannah. Young ladies go to Jannah, right? Yeah. He says, who's going to buy this abd from me? And when the Sahabi turned around to see, see who it was, it was none other than the process of him. So he joked back and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I'm going to get a cheap price. Who's going to possibly want to buy me, right? <laughs> Who's gonna... And then the process of him said, No, rather, your price in the eyes of Allah is very high, right? What a beautiful story. Wow. What a great joke. Imagine being that sahabi that somebody surprises you you and literally hugs you from behind. And then you hear that, Oh, this is a slave. Sell him, sell him. Who's going to buy him, right? It really shows a playful nature of the process that many of us don't really think about. There are many other, you know, examples. In fact, there are even books written about, you know, these types of humorous incidents in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The point being that in all of these, we notice a number of things. First and foremost, he never crossed the bounds. What are the bounds? Yeah. To hurt somebody's feelings, number one, let's say. That would be the biggest, if you like, negative. To actually cause pain, inflict uh, inflict a type of, of genuine, you know, feeling of loss or feeling of uh, hurting one's pride, hurting one's ego, being denigrating, being sarcastic. That would be haram. You're not allowed to do that. Number two, he never lied. He never, ever told a lie. Now, I want to be very clear here. You're a comedian, Babali. Yes. You sometimes give jokes that are not true. So the typical joke of, well, uh, there was an American, there was a British, there was a Spanish. You start like that, right? Uh-huh. And it's never really, it's never true. Like there is no American, British, Spanish. Is that haram or halal? Technically, that is not haram. Why is it not haram? Because it is understood by the context mm. that you're not telling a lie. Everybody knows this is a fable, right? Yes. Everybody knows. However, our Prophet Sassim, being the perfect human that he was, as perfect as humanly possible, nothing came from his mouth other than the truth. So his quote-unquote jokes were not these types of one-liners that are not true, even though it is halal. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Like the perfection is that those types of humorous things are left aside. However, it's understood that they're, you know not everybody's going to be perfect and there's nothing wrong, i.e., it is not sinful for a person who's known to be a comedian or for anybody in the context of comedy. So if somebody says, hey, hey, guys, I got a funny one. And then he begins, right? You know, there was a man or or there was a priest and a rabbi and, a, a, and an imam, for example, right? You begin that way. It's not kadib or lying because everybody knows that this is a joke. Yet, what does the hadith say? That the Prophet promised a house in paradise for the one who gives up lying even if he's joking. Wow. What kind of mazihan, right? Which means there's like a higher... So 
the point of saying even if he's joking because you know when you joke you're not quite lying because it's not a kadib yet the one who gives up even that do you think he's ever going to lie an actual lie think about it if you are so conscious that even your jokes get 100% true then how are you possibly going to lie about money or about you know anything of this world or the akhir or anything of this nature therefore we say that these types of jokes that are one liners and understood to be fables and, and false and what not they don't technically come under kadhib in the sense that you are kadhib or sinful yet to abandon them is better Hence, the Islamic ruling on them would be that this is a type of makru or something to be a better to be avoided. Okay. Nonetheless, to be very clear, it is not haram. When would it be haram? We said if you hurt somebody's feelings, if you say something that is not understood or known to be a joke, an actual kadib, an actual lie, and a person thinks it is truthful. And most importantly, and that's really the big red line. If you crack a joke that seems to go against the izza or the honor of Allah Azza wa Jal or His Messenger or His Shariha, that's wallahi not just a small or even a major sin. Sometimes that could even be a type of kufr, a type of rejection because you do wow. not joke about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or about His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a manner that puts them down. Because why? They are sacred symbols. I mean, think about it. You don't joke about, let me give you an example. Does any, you know, normal, rational, decent human being joke about the integrity of his mother? Think about it. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, if you have a shred of human decency, right? I mean, you understand, you understand what I say, integrity. I understand 100%. Okay, any shred of decency, whether you're Muslim or Kafir or atheist or agnostic, it doesn't matter. Any shred of human decency, you just don't do that. Because you love your mother, you respect your mother, you wouldn't possibly cross that line. Well, the respect that is due to Allah and His Messenger is obviously infinitely more. And therefore, we never, astaghfirullah, drag them down to the level of a cheap joke. To do so, frankly, is an indication not just of a lack of knowledge, but, you know, to be even more, you know, blunt, it's actually a lack of iman because iman means you will respect Allah and His Messenger. And what really distresses me in, in, in the era that we're living in is that many of our young men and women, they seem to just absorb the predominant culture around us where there is no sacredness. There is no sanctity, even of religion. And they absorb this attitude and they then apply it to Islam. And you will find people cracking jokes about the religion of Islam and the rituals of Islam. Now here's the point, let's make a clear distinction. It is a fine line. If somebody makes fun of you praying, Baba Ali, your prayer, and somebody says, oh, look at that guy praying, and he mimics you. This is perhaps wrong, it's sarcastic. You know, if it's putting you down, it will be haram. But if somebody were to mimic the salah and make fun of the salah sarcastically, that is no longer just a sin. If you make fun of prostrating to Allah, imagine, right? You're yeah. making fun of the greatest act of worship. Then all of a sudden, you're going beyond just, you know, making fun of Baba Ali. Now, here's the problem. Where does one draw the distinction between making fun of Baba Ali's salah and making fun of salah? Especially when you're a comedian on YouTube, right? And you yes. just have a, a video where you're mocking the sajda. I might be mocking Baba Ali's sajda, right? But another teenager watches that video and he begins to mock the sajda itself. And that's why it's a very dangerous thing here that you need to be careful about. Now, of course, we're not talking about mocking those people who don't pray properly. Maybe that's one form of da'wah for teenagers. Maybe, okay? That guys don't just pray like a chicken or something and then you mock that. Okay, I understand where that's coming from. And you know, mm -hmm. perhaps there's some leeway over there. But I'm talking about, again, making fun of the hijab, making fun of any aspect of Islam, making fun of, you know, uh, any type of thing that Allah Azza wa has commanded. One needs to be very careful because the person who cracks the joke might be making fun of another individual, but the listeners might just move on to the next step, which is to make fun of the commandment itself. And that's, as I said, a, a very, very big and dangerous red line to cross. It actually sounds very scary. I was concerned when I first started doing comedy, I didn't want to lie because I came across the hadith that said that Allah curses those who lie to make people laugh. Well, well, Baba Ali, one needs to understand what is the meaning of, of that hadith. It's not meant to be the, the comedians who understand that their audience understands that they're just cracking a joke. What is meant is you say a lie that people think are true. People think those lies are true. And then they find it like, you know, funny. And then he goes, oh, you know, I was just kidding with you guys. I didn't really, 
you know, mean to, 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 you know, put the other person down or do this and that. So the intent here, when a comedian such as yourself or anybody stands up on stage and he begins with his act, everybody knows that is not an actual kadib because kadib means that the person thinks you're telling the truth. You understand the difference between, so it's you, what you're doing as a comedian is more akin to fables. Yes. Once upon a time, there lived a princess. I mean, are we going to say that you can't tell these fables to our kids? I mean, you know, even kids know this is just a story. You know, it's not something that's a, a thing. So we, we want to be a little bit careful about not making Islam too strict and not making is the halal haram. So I said, and I said very clearly, this is makruh, but it is not Haram. Until now, I've been so scared of death of making sure everything I say is accurate. I'm so self-conscious. Even when I'm speaking, in the back of my head, I'm thinking to myself, what I said right now, was it accurate? Did this really happen? Am I exaggerating? Am I being sarcastic? Maybe I don't remember it correctly. And I'm going through this whole paranoia and no one even has any idea what's going on in my head. All they see me is laughing and they're laughing. And I guess it's that fear inside of me to make sure I don't want to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by what I'm doing on stage. Because even though I'm off stage or on stage, I know every single word that I'm saying, I'll be accountable for. So knowing this and knowing it in the context, what I'm saying, it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable, <laughs> inshallah, and it makes me less paranoid as well. So I want to ask you a separate question because I see one thing a lot of brothers doing and they make jokes. And I don't know if this joking is allowed or not, but some case, like husbands will make jokes with their wife about a second wife. And I don't know if their joke is because they're testing their wife to see how they're going to react because like, oh, if you're offended, I was just joking. If you're not offended, let's talk. These types of jokes, uh, and I've said this very clearly to, to my students when I teach them about these issues. Uh, I ask my students, uh, the men's, when, you know, when I teach the brothers, I say, yeah, yeah, ikhwa, my dear brothers, what do you think you will accomplish by cracking jokes about potential yeah. second wives in front of your wife? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never once joked about, you know, getting married to more women, you know, in front of his wives. And I, I'm not making fun of the concept. I'm not saying if somebody does wants to do it, I'm not saying that. You want to do it, do it like the Prophet Sallallahu did. It properly, right? But joking in front of your wife about other women, imagine if your wife joked about other men, your blood would boil, you would lose control, right? You would get so angry, like how dare you talk about, well then your wife's feelings are more sensitive than yours. And it's just not gentlemanly. It's not in conformity with the sunnah to make fun of the feelings of your wife in this in this regard. And I would say that this is of the types of jokes that no decent, respectable husband would do. That he's just going to joke constantly about, you know, harp about, oh, you're not good enough for me. Let me take another woman. What type of husband, you know, does that? Do you think it's going to increase the love of your wife and increase the marital bliss in the household? And again, I'm not saying, I'm astaghfirullah, not making fun of the concept. I'm saying a man should have enough self decency and respect not to trivialize the emotions of his wife in this manner. And if a person feels the Islamic requirements are met and it is halal and whatnot, then he should approach it in a mature and respectful manner and not in a jestful uh, manner. So I would say, again, I'm not saying it's haram or sinful, but I'm saying it's simply not of the etiquettes of a good husband. And what did our Prophet ﷺ say? The best of you in manners are the best of you to your wives. And I am the best to my wife. And I have no problem saying that any husband who teases his wife in a manner to hurt her feelings and taking on another wife is definitely going to hurt her feelings is not acting like a good husband. Very well said. And this is not just a reminder for myself, but it's a reminder for all the husbands that are listening. So, you know, you, you mentioned something while you're answering the last question. And you mentioned like even when a person is speaking, do you think it's fair for those people like, if any speaker is giving a lecture and if they make a joke and it's taken the wrong way and it's people like, oh, I'm not going to attend these lectures anymore. We can't even joke around sometimes because people will misunderstand it. Exactly. I actually am a very strong proponent of public speakers in particular and Islamic personalities in particular being extra careful of their jokes. Why? Because, and, and this is something that a mentor to the both of us, you know, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, I remember when I first started giving da'wah, you know, he took me aside and he said, you know, I want to give you some pieces of advice, you know. And uh, one of the things he said, and he's a very funny man, he's always joking and whatnot, right? One of the things he told me was, if you say a joke and you've offended one person, then that's one person too many you've offended. I need to get rid of the joke. Wow. Okay, so I try my best to be very conscious. Now, obviously, having said that, sometimes people get offended for the wrong reason or they misunderstood. That's a separate issue. But if you talked about another group, another ethnicity, another gender, I mean, men especially have to be extra, extra, extra careful about cracking jokes about women. That's just not, I mean, it's easier for me to crack jokes about men because I'm a man and nobody's going to say, oh, you know, it's like of your own. I crack more jokes 
about Pakistanis because I'm Pakistani or Indian, right? Than I do about Arabs because yeah. you know it's understood. It's a little bit more open in your own culture. Talk about your own culture. Yeah. Nobody's going to accuse you of like you know you're used to it. It's your is your people, right? Yeah. So the point being, one needs to be cognizant. One needs to be conscious of one's own status, one's own background, one's own heritage, one's own gender. All of this. How can I crack jokes that might be interpreted to be denigrating to women or you know at another ethnicity? One needs to be extra conscious and careful and not open up the possibility of evil thoughts coming because it is a part of our religion to not give people the ammunition to ruin your reputation for no reason. Best example we have: the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is walking at night with his wife Sophia and it's dark nobody can see who it is and two sahaba pass by and they see it's the process of him. so they're embarrassed because he's with his wife so they rush on away and he said slow down you should know this is Sophia with me and they were so embarrassed they could only say Ya Rasulullah meaning of course we didn't assume anything but he said shaitan runs through the body of a human just like his blood and I didn't want you to get any bad thoughts basically right so imagine our process of walking with his own wife and he wants to tell the people Hey, you know, guys, this is my wife here. This is the point that a person preserves his dignity and self-respect and decency. So, how much more so if somebody's going to say, "Oh, that sheikh, he's always putting down," you know, if he's Pakistan, he's putting down Arabs. If he's Arab, he's always putting down Pakistan. Might not be true. He just might be cracking jokes. But then you're giving ammunition, right, to people that don't like you. So. Totally agreed. A person of authority and respect and knowledge needs to be even more conscious of what he says and the types of of jokes that he cracks. Sometimes I want to do a joke on stage, but I, I'm afraid how it could be misunderstood because I'm trying to make a point, and they may think I'm making a different point. For example, this is not my joke, but one thing I said is that if women rule the world, there'll be no more wars. There'll just be a bunch of countries not talking to each other. <laughs> it is funny. It is. Okay, it is yeah. funny, but here, uh, I asked a brother just today, he says, yeah, I can understand how sister would be offended with that. I said, well, tell me what's offensive about it. And he was kind of quiet. And I said, okay, let's look at the joke. When men are ruling these countries, they are killing and they're starting wars. When women are ruling countries, they're just not talking to each other when they are mad at each other. Which one's worse? The guys or the girls? Yeah. So I see each gender looks at responding in a different way. One starts it with aggressiveness right? Physical aggressiveness. And one starts it with, I'm just not going to talk to you. I'm giving you the silent treatment. So is that really offensive to women? No, I just look at that as a gender as being different. So I find it funny, but I'm always self-conscious. If I say this joke on stage, is it going to be funny or is it going to be offended? And I don't know. Do you think our people are more hypersensitive these days or am I just being paranoid? I don't think, I don't think we're any more hypersensitive than other, other people. But I mean, we just have to be cognizant that the, the ummah is, mashallah, ta, tabarakallah, such a diverse community. We have so many ethnicities, so many people of different backgrounds, so many other issues. So so I think it's just a matter of, you know, being aware that people might possibly misinterpret or read in. Now about that joke, I'm not the best judge. You need to ask other people. I mean, I found it funny. I don't personally see it to be that offensive. But here's another, <laughs> here's another point, uh, Babali, is that, you know, you develop your reputation. So if a person always jokes in a manner that is demeaning to one group or ethnicity, it's different than if a person is an equal opportunity jokester, right? Yes. So if you put brothers down and put sisters down, each in his own way, it's easier than if you concentrate on, you know, only putting one gender down or one ethnicity down, right? Of course. Yeah, so this also needs to be taken into account. A lot of more Muslims right now are on YouTube. And I'm not on YouTube like I used to be. So now I'm doing more and more podcasts. But people are on YouTube. And then the level of joking is a bit different than when I was on YouTube. So when my content was about the stuff that we do as Muslims that has nothing to do with Islam. And the reason I made jokes about these things with the hopes that people would be ashamed of doing these things that we've become completely immune to. These days when you watch YouTube videos, it's a lot of pranks, playing tricks on people. And I was just wondering, how does Islam view the pranks? So again, it goes back to the relationship you have with the person. It's a very important thing here that will the person be genuinely hurt or will the person, you know, actually find it funny? So any prank that is going to actually, you know, emotionally hurt, of course, physical hurt, that's understood. You don't physically hurt anybody. I mean, that's understood. But any prank that will potentially be, you know, bring about pain or, or whatnot, that's something that Islam would not allow because we're not allowed to bring pain and suffering or actually hurt, uh, you know, physically or emotionally another person. So the fine line here, you need to make a judgment 
engagement call that will this little joke that I play actually bring about some camaraderie, some genuine friendship, or if it's between husband and wife, you know, it'll bring about a genuine love or something. That's something that varies from couple to couple or from friendship to friendship. And in the end of the day, you know best, but to err on the side of caution is always uh, better in that regard. Okay, that's actually very good to know. I was just wondering, as a personal question, do you joke around with your family, with your kids, with your wife? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, you know I have a funny side, which I... I know, that's why I'm smiling right now. <laughs> On stage, I, I'm a little bit more, you know, conscious and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, my friends know me very well. That uh, and even from my college days, it's like I've always liked to have a, a humorous side, and we always try to crack jokes within the confines of, of the Sharia. And of course, within friends, you're a little bit more open about, you know, your your pranks and your jokes that we say to one another. And that's human nature. I mean, no doubt amongst your college mates because I have my college friends to this day people that I went to college with before I was you know before I was Sheikh Yasser Qadi you know what I'm saying I was just a regular guy mashallah alhamdulillah I still am a regular guy alhamdulillah so I still have my college friends and when we get together obviously we crack jokes about our college days man what we did you know and our ups and downs and our you know politics and whatnot. so alhamdulillah that's a part of life and I, the reason I asked that question is because I think a lot of people think that the more religious you are the more rigid you have to be and it's very refreshing to know that even Sheikh Yasaradi jokes around, but again, within the boundaries of Islam. And I think that's something that I'm taking away with this. And I think a lot of people are learning from you on a human level that Sheikh Yasaradi is yes to Sheikh, but at home, he's sometimes just Yasser. And <laughs> well, I'm all, at home, I'm always Yasser. <laughs> calls me Sheikh Yasser at home. Don't worry about that. <laughs> And I don't want them to. SubhanAllah, why should it? In fact, my little girl, whenever, like, you know, she finds it so cute when somebody calls me Sheikh Yasser. She's like six years old, you know. So when she wants to joke with me, somebody says, you know, who's Baba? She's like, my Baba is Sheikh Yasser. She's like joking about it for her. It's like, you know, who is this Sheikh Yasser? He's Baba. <laughs> Well, alhamdulillah, that's the way it should be, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, with that, Sheikh Yasser Qadi, I'd like to thank you so much for coming out to, for today's show. I, you've enlightened me, especially me as a guy who does comedy on stage. I actually learned quite a bit today, and I didn't even know about some of the things you mentioned today. So alhamdulillah, it's enlightened me, and a lot of the people who are out there joking with one another, hopefully, inshallah, are more conscious of staying within the boundaries of Islam, because if you do, it's better, and if you don't, there's consequences that come with it. So I'd like to thank all my listeners who have been listening to this podcast if you have any questions or comments please post them on babaalishow.com again please share this podcast with your friends and uh, hopefully inshallah it will enlighten them as well we are on itunes type in baba ali show and this is baba ali reminding you just in case you forgot assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh the baba ali show